Ramsey passed uh, on this morning at 5.20. Uh, he passed away peacefully. I was by his side. And um, as a family, we've accepted. And mine is just to give my heartfelt gratitude to all Kenyans and non-Kenyans for the prayers and thoughts that have been given to Mze and to our family. Thank you all, and God bless you all. Thank you. Moi's humble start to life began in Kuriengwo village, Sacho Division, Baringo, in the then Kenya colony on 2nd September 1924. However, aged just four, Moi's father would pass on, leaving his upbringing to his mother, Kabon, and elder brother, Tuitoek. In 1934, toiling as a herds boy, Moy was selected to join the new Africa Inland Mission AIM school at Kabartonjo. It was here that he adopted the Christian faith and took on the name Daniel. After attending Kapsabet Teacher Training College and the Kagumo Teachers College, Moy would, from 1946 until 1955, work as a teacher and later headmaster at the Tambach Teachers Training College in Keio District. It is perhaps his modest start to life that informed Moy's life philosophy of peace, love and unity. Fittingly outlined in his book, Kenya African Nationalism, Nyayo Philosophy and Principles, that was published in 1986, the vast majority of his speeches on and off the cuff centered around these three pillars, whenever he crisscrossed Kenya and engaged with her people. The living and working conditions for Africans had steadily deteriorated, particularly after the legislation of an act by the colonial government in 1929, legalizing the dispossession of African lands. By the 1940s, there were growing choruses calling for the right to African self-determination, notably led by the Mau Mau Rebellion. An act of grudging appeasement by the British colonial government was the nomination of one African to the Legislative Council known as the LegCo in 1944. This was not enough. The 1954 Littleton Constitution introduced eight African elective seats and in 1957 Daniel Arup Moy was elected as the Rift Valley representative. A year prior, though, Moy had made his LegCo debut when the colonial governor, Sir Evelyn Baring, appointed him to represent the vast Rift region. It is particularly noteworthy that in his close to half a decade political career, Moy would never lose an election. After founding the Kenya African Democratic Union Kadu political party in June 1960, together with Lejko's coast rural representative Ronald Ngala, among others, Moy would join the African delegation to the Lancaster House conferences in London, paving the way for Kenya's independence. In acknowledgement, perhaps, to his teaching background, Moy would in 1961 serve as the Minister of Education in the pre-independence government. <laughs> Moy would watch on as the Colonial Union Jack flag was lowered for the final time and replaced by the red, black and green flag of the new Kenya and the new national anthem officially played out to the masses, estimated at over 250,000 gathered at what is now called Uhuru Gardens. Prime Minister Jomo Kenyatta, the leader of the Kenya African National Union Kanu, would oversee the midnight December 11th and 12th 1963 transition celebrations as Kenya became the 34th African nation to break away from European colonial domination. After Kadu voluntarily dissolved and joined Kanu in 1964, 
President Kenyatta appointed Moy as Minister for Home Affairs. From this position, Moy would stride the width and breadth of Kenya, popularizing Kanu and its leader. His devotion and allegiance to the president would ultimately be rewarded when Moy was appointed vice president on 5th January 1967. For 11 years... Good evening and welcome to Point Blank uh, here at KTN News. We are here at the Nairobi Serena. In remembering the life and times of the late President Daniel Arab Moy, Point Blank has put together some things that he has done. What has President Moy done over the years? The Kenyan and East African flags flew at half-mast as per the presidential proclamation and so began the second president of the Republic of Kenya's final journey. The military took over the Lee Funeral Home in Nairobi, where Daniel Torrey Teach Arab Moy's body rested. At the former president's Nairobi residence, Carbanet Gardens, the Moy family, led by Raymond, Philip, Gideon, Jennifer, June, Doris and John Mark, solemnly welcomed the multitudes, leaders and laymen and women who streaked in in their thousands from early in the morning to late evening. Katian's point blank Tony Gashoka arrived with Rilo Dinga Jr. and offered the Moy family his, the point blank family, KTN, and the Standard Media Group at large's heartfelt condolences. Parliament buildings, inside and outside, was prepared for an impressive observance that will linger long in the memories of Kenyans. On 8th February 2020, President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta and First Lady Margaret led the nation in paying their last respects at Parliament buildings where Moi had served for 39 years until his retirement in December 2002. For three days, Kenyans of all walks of life stood in line, patiently waiting to convey their admiration to a man who had fashioned their destiny. On the morning of the 11th of February, the Kenyan military escorted the former president first back to State House. Then onwards to Nyayo National Stadium, the first sports arena of its kind built by the former president, where national service would be observed. In all tributes read by family and leaders present, more striking was the recollection of the Daniel Arab Moy's singular dedication to Africa's self-determination and peaceful coexistence. His ultimate dream was that of African unity and a peaceful and united continent. From Tanzania's third and fourth presidents, Benjamin Mkapa and Jakaya Kikwete, Kenyans were treated to rich recollections of Moy's united East Africa vision. <laughs> Your style ya uongozi, namna kuhusiana na watu, namna kuheshimu watu, namna kupenda watu. Kwa naelewa kwa nini wa Kenya naomboleza na kusikitika sana kwa kifo chake. Mze wetu, lakini kwangu mimi alikuwa mentor wangu katika utawala na uongozi. Ndiyo sababu, nisema lazima nije na kupay tribute. To Saleh Wok Zewde, the president of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, who spent considerable time in Kenya under the ages of the United Nations. We will always remember the fundamental role that he has played in the formation of our regional organization IGAD back in 1986. To Salva Kir, the president of South Sudan, who conceivably learned from his guide, father and mentor Moy on learning to forgive. South Sudan is the product of his work and will remain his legacy. My people very much respect and honor late President Daniel Arab Moy. And Rwanda's benevolent leader, Paul Kagame, who with Moy's patient guidance helped steer his nation out of the worst genocide witnessed in Africa. Our country and our people join you in the grieving. And if Kenyans 
succeed and make progress, we also share in that. To the iconic freedom fighter and now longest serving African statesman, Yoweri Museveni of Uganda. Uzalendo, Roya East Africa, na capacity to reconcile even when you have had some differences. I saw this myself. So therefore, I was, uh, when I was invited, I said I would take this opportunity to bring out those three qualities of Mzeimoi, which I saw myself. Also present was Brahim Ghali, the president of Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, a nation state that President Moi intervened in and helped broker a peace settlement with Morocco. <laughs> الذين دافعوا عن حريتها عن كرامتها عن وحدتها عن أمنها عن استقرارها وعن تنميتها President Arab Moy a great leader who fought for liberty for independence and for decolonization of our continent it is President Moy who offered his personal doctor for South Africa, Africa, and the world's liberation icon when, in 1990, Nelson Mandela fell sick on a trip to Addis upon his release from his Robben Island jail. Mandela would return to Kenya in official capacity, welcomed by the former president and throngs of cheering crowds. In a break with official protocol, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga was afforded time to relay his thoughts. The former detainee poignantly chose to focus his message on forgiveness at the arena where the former president's last official public message to the people of Kenya, Jamhuri Day, 12th December 2002, also focused on forgiving. We remember the great things that he did. For example, introducing universal primary education of our country, the free milk in school, the Nyayo, Maziwa, Yanyayo, and trying to consolidate the unity among the people of Kenya. In doing so, he also made some mistakes. I was, for example, one of the victims. But he was also forgiving like I'm also forgiving. In the most revealing of accolades was that of his youngest son, Gideon. The senator shared anecdotes of his father, insights Kenyans had until that moment yet to hear or know. And I'll remember, Nakumbuka Nanmueleza Kwamba, Doctor Tafadali Mze, Doctor Yamekata. Akaneuliza Unona Doctor Yapa. He had bought a new car, and like many a young man, I could not resist the temptation to take it for a spin. Unfortunately, my driving skills then did not match my enthusiasm, and the new car was shortly no more. Dreading breaking the news to my father, I had, I had the cunning idea carry a Bible in one hand <laughs> as I entered his room. My father, who of course had heard of the accident, took one look at me, shook his head, and burst into laughter. And that was the end of the matter. And finally, with a red rose in his left lapel, a homage to his mentor, President Kenyatta eulogized the arrested leader. We come not so much to mourn the passing of a man, but to celebrate the life of a giant of history. As we pay our last respects and prepare to lay Mzemoi to a well-deserved rest, we hold in our thoughts and prayers, his family, his friends, and loved ones. In this solemn moment, let us all take comfort in the fact that President Daniel Toroiti Charab Moy leaves behind a towering legacy of good, 
that will transcend the generations. We are comforted by the memory held so dear by this gallant son of Kenya. We find comfort that peace is one of the very foundations of family, community, and nationhood here in Kenya. And today, let that peace that surpasses all understanding attend our way. With a military escort by his side, the teacher, mentor, family man, peacemaker, Kenya's longest serving leader, the East African and the Pan-African made his way home. Mimi ndiyo kweli, the, the, the leader of this family now. Lakini kwa kisiasa, kisiasa wacha bini na amshe Gideon. Gideon kuja. Kwa kisiasa itakuwa huyu, sibo? So, mimi tu ni kusema hivi. Kwa bila mze, alituchunga sisi. Kwa bila mze, alichunga Kenya hii. Kwa bila mze, alichunga sisi uote. Pia, sisi tunamuambia huyu, tunamuambia ye kandu ya mke. Ama na mnagadi wa rongai? Siku hivyo. Kanu ya mke, sunano hatu wa mevako fia ya jekundu. Tunataka kanu ya mke, tunajua tuko na BBI, and we want to be part of that. Tunakubali BBI kabisa. We are behind you, and we are behind the president. Kwa familia ya... Moy Kap Chepkeres, Jami Wango, uh, Kap Chepkeres, Na Jomba Zango Kap Bomet, Ata Kushika Irungo, <laughs> it's uh, anyway, Nitashika, and I'll do my best, Na Nitajaribu, Nitajaribu. Nikiweka mwenyezi mungu mbele. Before the show gets on, um, Prime Minister Raila Odinga was out of the country and in the condolences by the Odinga family, I spoke to Her Excellency Aida Odinga about her experience, her remembrance and what she would like to tell the country about the late President Daniel Arap Moy. This is uh, Point Blank. We, the people of Kenya, woke up to some very bad news about the diminished of the former, vice, the former president of Kenya, who is Daniel Tarotich Arab Moy. It was a sad day for all of us because we still remember Moy with a lot of fondness. Moy was a president for 24 years, and the things he covered and the things he did with the people of Kenya are remarkable and will go to the annals of history as one of the best that we've had so far in history. Now, we've known President Moy for a long time. And uh, even before he became the president, we knew uh, President Moy as a leader, a staunch leader in this nation. Uh, I first came to know him at a close range way back when I was in school. I went to the Highland School in Eldoret, called, now called Moi Girls High School in Eldoret. And th at that time, he used to be the chair of the Board of Governors. And every time the meeting was held, we were very happy to have him come to visit school because we liked him as the leader at that time. Anyway, as time goes by, we've grown in this country, we've known President Moi for a long time. Generally, I would say that
President Moi was a good man. He did a lot for this nation. You remember in the issue of education, he introduced the, the nyayo milk to the young, to the children. It means that he cared about the education, but he also cared about the nutrition. And the, those students who went to school, those children who went to school at that particular time, they grew up to be very healthy people in our society. Also the issue of health. You remember, he introduced the district hospitals, which were fully equipped with the medicine, doctors, nurses, and anybody, everything else that you needed from the hospitals. Now, those are some of the things that we'll remember him for. I know he struggled a lot to bring Kenyans together, to make us feel patriotic, to make us feel that Kenya belonged to us and belonged to everybody. And when it comes particularly to my family, the Udinga family, I know there are members of the Udinga family who would also say something about this. I know uh, my husband, uh, Right Honorable Rail Udinga, would say something, but, and he has already said something. But because he's not here, he's in Washington, D.C. for that national prayer breakfast. Uh, I can also say something on his behalf. And we also have Dr. Guru, whom I know, head of the family, who will talk about it. But all in all, I know that there's been very cordial relationship between the Mois and the Odingas. I personally, I'm a great friend of some of the Moi children. I know Jennifer, for example, and she was the first person I called this morning. I know Beatrice, who is a daughter-in-law. I know June Moy was my student at Kenya High School, and Philip, and, and Gideon, and many others. And I really feel sorry for their loss. Now, sometimes people think that when you are grown up and you are losing uh, a parent who is older, then there's no much feeling. The relationship and fondness grows with age. The older they are, the more dear they become to you. So I really want to express my sincere condolences. The relationship between us did not start with Rael and I. It started with Mzee Jaramogi of Ingudinga. Remember in the early 90s, after the repeal of Section 2A, in the early 90s, where the one-party rule was removed, um, there was fond relationship between the two. Despite the fact that sometimes they were differing in idea, ideas, but personal relationship was very strong. And uh, I remember after that, just before Jeremogi passed on in February, February in January 19, uh, 1904, they had become very good friends and were even visiting one another with them. Now, us, as the railers, we also have a good time with them. I remember he's been there sometimes when there's need. For example, during our daughter's uh, wedding, he was there. Our daughter, Rosemary. During Junior's wedding, he was also there to be with us. And for those, we are very grateful. He was quite a nice person and very friendly. And uh, this one he spread even to the children and uh, to the grown-up. So we'll miss Muse. Few occasions we visited him in Kabarak and even at, in um, Kabarnet Gardens in Nairobi. We visited him. One thing I liked whenever we visited President Moy is that when you visit him and he knew that you were coming, he will meet you at the door and greet you and welcome you into the home. I think that was quite remarkable. We see very little of that these days, but I thought he was quite a gentleman. Even mayor me to be met at the door and be welcomed to the home. Tony, there's something I'd like to remind you of. You remember in the early 80s, let's say 1982, after the attempted coup and then 
remember Raila was charged with uh, treason and eventually he was detained for six and a half years under the leadership of President Moi. Then later on, he came out in 1988, stayed out for only six months, and he was detained again. Then he came out again for one year, and he was detained for the third time. You know, those things could make somebody be bitter with the system that was there at that particular time. But then, uh, Todi, I've always told you, you cannot live with bitterness. Sometimes you must learn to forgive. And when you forgive, you are free in your heart. And you forgive genuinely. So when eventually, after 1993, we talked and we forgave. And we said we forgive. And I've heard the president also say that, Kaban Likosea Mutu and Isame. So you forgive and you become friends. And sure enough, in the later years, the Odingas and the Moyes were great friends, very, very good friends. And it's only something that we learn, that when you forgive, you are free. You become free in your heart, and therefore you are free, and the friendship flourishes. And that's the kind of friendship that has been there between us and the President Moy. So we only pray and we are sure that God will rest President Moy's soul in eternal peace because he was a man with a clean heart. Good evening and welcome to a special um, production of Point Blank. We start on a somber note as the country has lost our second president, the late Daniel Toraitich Arab Moy. The late Moy was born in 1924 and had an illustrious career that spanned many decades here and across Africa. In fact, one would say he was um, one of the greater statesmen who uh, came from that period in time, uh, right after independence. In order to understand better the life and the times of the late president, the KTN News, uh, first of all, uh, has gone out and looked at the people that we would be able to tell his story firsthand in order that Kenyans uh, could mourn, understand, and maybe celebrate the life of the late Daniel Toraitich Arab Moy. Before I start the program today, uh, let me on my own behalf, on behalf of KTN News, the Standard Media Group and the entire team here, send our condolences to the family uh, of the late President Moy, and of course to all Kenyans who are together with the family are mourning his death. To kick off uh, the discussion today, I'm honored uh, to have in studio uh, Senator Moses Wetangula, who uh, was not just a close friend uh, of President Moy, but actually worked with him in an official capacity. Uh, Moses Wetangula, Karibu Sana. Asante Sana. What uh, are your recollections of the late president? Uh, let me also join you in sending my condolences to the family of um, Mze Moy. Uh, and uh, Kenyans at large who are feeling a sense of loss, having lost a president who served this country for 24 years. I was nominated to parliament by President Moy in 1993, after the first uh, multi-party elections after the change of the constitution. And we became close friends. As a lawyer, he relied uh, from time to time on certain advice from me. And uh, we grew a very close relationship that lasted until uh, he's gone to his maker. Now, looking back, I want to look at President Moy within the context and perspective of continental politics in Africa. President Moy went to parliament in the 50s, 1956 to be exact, or thereabouts. And he went through the colonial era up to our acquisition of independence. At independence, uh, most African countries got their independence between 59 and 1966-7. You may recall that around 1965-6, starting about 64, 
There was a lot of turbulence on the continent, coups in Nigeria, coups in Ghana, disturbances in Tanzania, uh, and so on and so forth. At that time in Kenya, there was also some degree of political instability following the fallout of uh, Mze Kenyatta and Jaramogo Gingo Dinga. At that time, uh, Moi, who was the leader of Kadu, opted for the stability of the country, folded his party, and teamed up with Mze Kenyatta to have one Kanu as a party that ran the country. The details of how Kanu ran the country is a story for another day, but the country remained stable. Uh, President Moy went on until the time um, Mze Kenyatta uh, passed on in 1978, and uh, he succeeded in a peaceful transition at that time, again, uh, Africa was then full of the glamour for one-party state, strongman leadership, and in many cases, uh, human rights were not an issue uh, because the whole world was uh, divided between East and West. You're either with Russians or with Americans, and whoever you are with was your defender, regardless of your politics. Now, came... Uh, the year 1982, because of uh, the issues that were cropping up in the country, there was an attempted coup. Uh, after that attempted coup, President Moy uh, consolidated his power even more, purged a few of his friends from uh, his inner circle, and continued running the country as a single party state. Now, a challenge came again in 1991-92 when there was a very serious glamour for multipartism in Kenya. And President Moy then had consolidated his power, he had the army on his side, the police on his side, and would have, uh, within the context of, again, the Cold War, gotten away with anything. But when things came to a crunch, he personally, and I know this because all the crowd around him were against his conceding to the change of the constitution. He acceded to the removal of Section 2A and ushered in multipartism. The country again stabilized and we moved to a new level. Then it came 1996-97, uh, when we were going to elections and the country again went to the brink. President Moy again picked stability at the exp against personal gain and personal comfort and allowed parliament to go through the IPPG that brought far-reaching reforms at the time in the electoral structure, uh, repealed the Chiefs Act that was a very draconian colonial legislation that was used by the government to oppress people and so on, and uh, went on uh, to take two terms as per the a new constitution that had come in uh, through 2A, and went on up to 2002. When we went to elections in 2002, President Moy had a candidate in uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta who did not win the elections. At that time, given how African countries were behaving in the geopolitics of the continent, he would very well have caused a uh, fracas and a rampas in the country by refusing to hand over power to President Kibaki. He gracefully walked into Uhuru Park and handed over the reins of power and uh, the powers of uh, running the country to present Kibaki. Mishimu, at a personal level, people yes. talked about the great teacher. Yes. Did, did, you, did he live through that? Uh, he was the, originally the teacher. <laughs> President Moy, like uh, I've said before, came from very humble background. He was as a primary school teacher. He came through, and uh, his legacy in education is very strong. When he introduced Maziwa Kowatoto in schools, a lot of children went to school, but more importantly, the whole country is dotted with schools, girls schools named after him, which he started personally. When he became president, there was only one university in Kenya. At the time he lived, he had chartered uh, Jomo Kenyatta University, he had chartered uh, Kenyatta University, he had chartered Moi University, and laid a foundation where we have now many universities to help Kenyans in whatever way education we can talk about. It's been an honor, of course, talking to Senator Moses Wetangula about his recollection about the late President Daniel Torreji Charap Moy as Point Blank continues uh, to remember his life.
Thank you, Tony. And uh, fellow Kenyans, let's celebrate the life of this illustrious son of our soil and what he did for our country, particularly holding the country together through very difficult and turbulent times. And this is uh, KTN News. Thank you. is KTN News. To unite Kenyans, if you want to bring Kenyans together and to stop divisive elections, corruption, and build national ethos, then you must drop your personal ambitions. We need to put the interests of the people first. If you're sitting in an agricultural committee in parliament, if you're in the budget committee, which resources have you allocated to sort out that coffee problem and that tea problem? Do you have a vision? Is it there? Do you have momentum? Is it there? Anybody trying to take us back to the dark days, I am not going to allow that as a chamber president. You cannot possibly begin to bury me when I'm alive. <laughs> what he's telling you is keep your position. Yes. Let me